Okay, so um, what we're talking about here, we're talking about the practice guide for your uh, for chapter nine test. Uh, let's look kind of through this. The first problems are based on ellipses. We'll come back to this here in a minute. We'll actually work on number one. We have to complete the square on that one, then graph it. I did provide you a graph so you're a little more accurate. I don't want freehand drawings on the test, so I can actually grade it pretty clean. Uh, number two, same thing. This one's already completed. All we have to do is go draw it and figure out the foci and center uh, for uh, for my ellipse. Uh, three and four, these are the hyperbolas. Uh, same exact structure, you have to complete this part in one, the other one's already completed, you just have to go draw it. Um, five is a parabola, that was the second, uh, that was that was technically the first section that we did for chapter nine, uh, but I mixed it with chapter two stuff. This one we have to come up with the equation for it, and then once we have the equation, then we'll, uh, we'll figure out foci and directrix from there, wherever those are going to be. Um, six, same thing as a parabola. And then seven and eight, these problems are based on um, you have to complete the square and then tell me what type it is. Does that make sense? So I'm not telling you right off the bat that it's an ellipse or a hyperbola in the instructions. I want to know what type it is. It's one of three. It's either an ellipse, hyperbola, or a parabola. That's what you have to figure out. Once you know what type it is by completing the square, then you can go and tell me you know, the, the vertexes, or a vertex, if it's singular, uh, the foci or focus, uh, directrix if it has one, um, you know, asymptotes if there's any, that type of thing. But you have to complete the square on those problems. So kind of keep that in mind. So 7 is kind of a free-for-all. I didn't provide you a graph because I only want the certain parts. You shouldn't need a graph to figure out foci and directrix and other things. You should just use the formulas. Um, but you have to know what type it is so you know what formula to use. The formulas for you guys will be on the board on test day. So the, the default formula for a parabola, the default formula for a ellipse, and a hyperbola. So, and you know how to find the foci, those formulas will be on the board. Okay, they'll be up here on test day. All right, we good so far? Okay, well, let's start all the way back because there's only eight questions. Um, let's start back, let's go to number one. My goal today is to go through four, number four. I'm going to go through this insanely fast if you can keep up. Um, I'll ask for a little input here and there. Just make sure you kind of know what you're doing. And then once we're done here, then we're going to go back to this practice semester test. And I think today we're only going to do, I think, two of them. I think we said we're going to do from yesterday. Um, yesterday we did three. Today I think we only do two. Okay. Are we good so far? Perfect. Let's jump in. we gotta get, we got to move so we can get these done and you, you feel hopefully a little bit more comfortable with this. Clear thing that I want you to know on these. If you read the instructions, these are supposed to be ellipses. You can see that from the directions. But the other, the other thing that gives it away is this part right here. It has an x squared and a y squared. So it's either a circle or a, or an ellipse or a hyperbola. Why it's an ellipse is because it has a plus sign between them, between the x squared and y squared. And the other reason why it's not a circle is because it has a 4 in front of the x and not in front of the y. So it's an ellipse, it's been stretched one direction, okay? Now on these, this is the formula we're gonna to have to use. This is how we're gonna to have to find my, my foci. This is a, a slight difference in what you're doing in your homework, you know, the page 898 stuff. Because on that 898, that's hyperbolas, this is an ellipse and has a different formula for the foci. Keep that in mind, that will be on the board on test day so you know. All right, but we have to complete the square. How do you complete the square? What do we have to do? Um, take the 39 out. Okay. The 39. Good. We're moving it across. What else? The x's and y's in the middle. Perfect. All right. We're going to x and y's together. This problem should be recognizable if you've been working on your homework. Just saying. <clears throat> Might be number 45 or 44. Okay, questions so far? All right, uh, we have to factor out the four. So when we take that out, here's what we get. Factor out the one, so that can just stay the same. And we have a 39 over here. This is number 44, it's 45. I remember doing this one. Ooh, hold on, sorry. I get a little more space. Okay, we have to complete the square. So we have to take half the middle uh, on this term. So half the middle is two, we square it, that's four. 
We're going to add that, or we're going to multiply it to the four on the outside, so that's 16, and that's what I'm adding across. I'm adding 16 over here. So, so far that's 54 over there. And the middle term here, we take half the middle of this, square it. Um, so that is 3, we square it, that's 9. You take the times the number out front, there's no number out front, so we just add the 9 across. And now we can start combining stuff. So, this should be 64 over there. I think I added wrong. It's, it was 55. And then, now we add uh, 9, so we get 64. Okay, over here, we can factor these apart. What do I get when I first factor this first parenthesis? X plus 2. Yep. There's an X, then the plus, then the 2, because it's half the middle. Uh, the middle, the Y term, what is that? Y minus 3 squared. And what do we have to do last? Divided by 64. I'm going to simplify this all in one go. Sorry, I'm just going to write it with, because if I divide everything by 64, this thing will simplify, the 64 on the bottom here will simplify with the 4 here, so this will make x squared, or x plus 2 squared, I should say, sorry, um, over 16, because the 64 and 4 will simplify. Um, under the y, this will be a 64 down here, and then the 1. Right. Questions, comments, concerns about what we've done so far? Okay, now, what we have to do in this one, um, we have to, since it's, it is an ellipse, which number is bigger on the bottom? No. The y number. So that means since uh, on an ellipse, this only works for ellipses, by the way. Uh, since this number is bigger, that's the direction we're stretching. We're stretching more vertical. So this is a vertical ellipse. The horizontal is smaller. You'll see that when we actually draw it. Um, but it does have a new center. What is my center on this problem? Negative 2, 3. Negative 2, 3. Perfect. We're going to go draw that. So negative 2, uh, 3 up. All right, so there's my new center. I'll mark it with a C for center. So it's negative 2, positive 3. Um, and then from there, I'm going to use my the major axis. That's going up and down 8. Because that's is, I already told you, like, this is how we're stretching. We're going up and down 8. It's, it's always the square root of the bottom number. And if that doesn't work out nice and clean, just take the square root of whatever it is. So the square root of 64 is 8. So I'm going to go up 8. And I'm going to go down 8. So 1, 2, 3. Six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's the major axis for the ellipse, and the minor axis is going to the x numbers. So we're going to 16, or the square root of that is 4. So we're going over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and here is my ellipse. Questions on the ellipse so far? Does everyone understand how I want the fours and the eights? Now, the last thing we have to do, because this is, I think the ellipse is kind of easier drawings that we do. <coughs> what we have to do next is we have to figure out the foci. Now, before I start figuring out the foci, we already know the formula is this. This is my formula that I'm going to use. Where are they going to be roughly located before I even start? X's or Y's? Say? Again, against the Y axis. Because we, they always go along where the major axis is stretched, where the longest distance is. So the foci will be going up and down because they're along the y axis, because it's going up. Uh, that's, the major axis is the 8. So that's what we have to think about. So we're going to be plugging these numbers in. The a squared uh, turns out to be the 64. The b squared turns out to be the 16, because a squared is always the bigger number for, for ellipses. We're going to subtract the 64 across. So we're taking 16 and we're going to subtract 64. Uh, that should be a negative 48. I think I did my math right. Is that right? So 48. Okay. Take the negative signs off because I divide by negative 1. Take the square root of that. And the square root of 48 is nearly 7. It's like 6.9. So because the square root of 49 is 7. So it's so close to 7. So we're going up 7 almost. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7-ish, so it's almost close to 7. 
and then almost close to seven. So there's foci one and two in no particular order. All right, questions, comments, concerns? Perfect, let's move on to the next one. The next one is already done for you. What I mean by that, we don't have to complete the square on the next one. All you have to do is go draw the center, figure out where the major and minor axis is, and then figure out the foci from there. So this, the second one is gonna be by far the easier of the two. This one was definitely the more challenging. But are we good on the first one though? Before I move on, I don't know. Uh, how do you find out whether it's an ellipse or a parabola or a hyperbola? When you first look at it, uh, well, the directions tell you number one. But the other thing is, it's it's got to have an x squared and a y squared, so it's either an ellipse, circle, or hyperbola. If it's a plus, it's an ellipse and circle between them. And then since they're different numbers, it's not a circle, so it's got to be the ellipse where it's stretched. Okay. Does that make sense? Like the little shortcut that I use. Yeah. So the plus thing gives it a circle or ellipse. In between the x squared and y squared. If it was a minus sign, then it's a hyperbola. All right, so let's go to the next one. Now, this next one will be a lot faster than the first one. The first one always takes a while, you know. Okay, the second one. Um, I believe it's already completed the square on this one. It, it is, so that's perfect. Um, so, the number's on the bottom. Right now, because it's already been completed. We have a 9 on this one, and on this side, there's a 1 sitting there. The book didn't put it, so I didn't type it. So there's a 1 on the bottom of that one. So it's already been completed in the square, and yes, you can always put over 1. So which one is my major axis? The axis. So this one is stretched horizontally. Okay? Uh, because the 9 is the bigger of the two numbers on the bottom. Okay, so we're stretched more horizontal. Where's my center? Say that again? Negative 3, 2. Negative 3, 2. Okay. So negative 3, 2 up. There's my center. Um, to figure out the major minor axis, uh, we're going right and left, 3's, because that's the square root of 9. We're going up and down 1 for the y axis, because that's the square root of 1. So here's my ellipse. Really tiny. And now we have to figure out the foci. The formula for the foci, what is it again? C squared equals A squared plus C squared. Perfect. So that is different than what you guys are doing your homework this week. Keep that in straight. Hyperbolas have their own formula. Uh, so my A squared is the 9. My B squared is the 1. I subtract the 9 over, we get 8. And take the square root of that. And the square root of 8 is nearly 3. So it's nearly 3 and nearly 3. There's your foci. They're so close to 3. 2.8, 2.9. Questions? Okay, let's move on to the next one. I said this, like, the second one's always easier than the two. So when you look at 3 and 4, because these are my last two, do you notice that the pattern's the same when you look at 3 and 4? You're going to have to complete the square of the first one. The second one is already completed, so that one's the easier of the two drawings. That's what I'm going to do on the test. It'll be the same format. You have to complete the square on one of them, do all the easy stuff on the second one. Any questions on how to do this quickly, like I'm doing? Sorry, I really flew through that one. I want to get this number three. Number three takes a while. We're good? That's perfect. Okay, scroll, we got number three. So now these are hyperbolas. Okay, we have to complete the square, and again, it says that in the uh, in the directions, it says graph the hyperbola. So you can kind of know that, and again, um, going back to what Renner you asked earlier, how do I know? It's got an x squared and a y squared, so it's definitely not a parabola. So it's got an x squared and a y squared both, but then there's a minus sign in between them, so that's automatically a hyperbola. Like, I can just instantly tell. It's not a circle because it doesn't have a plus or an ellipse. And it's not a parabola because it has x squared and a y squared. Okay, we have to complete the square, so we have to kind of group things together. Um, right. This is one, I think we did this one in class one day. I remember doing the thing with the negative 67. I think, I think this might have been the problem you asked one day, but I think 
We did it the day before. No, because this was that was the one oh one. Was it our yeah. no, I remember doing this one though. Was it a homework problem? How do I know this one? It might be the one. Yeah, that it is definitely a homework problem. Right? No, it's not. We did an example. I just did an example. I just remember doing the sixty-seven on the other side. All right. Anyway, uh, factoring out sixteen, fine and dandy. We get x squared plus four x. We get a space. Factor out the negative one. We get y squared minus or plus two y. Uh, sorry, I'm really flying through that. I factored out the the sixteen and I factored out the negative one. Uh, when you factor out the negative one, that's the part that I'm worried about. That some people forget to take out the negative sign when you factor out negative one. You do have to factor that out because I do need the y squared to be positive before I move on. Yeah, I'll give you a little bit of time. Sorry, I just blitz through that really fast. Okay, next step. Half the middle squared. Half the middle. Is that two? We square it, that's four. We take the times the number on the outside, which is 64, and that's what I add over here. Next part, half the middle is 1, squared is still 1. Take the times the number out front, which is negative 1, and that's what I'm putting over here. And so if I simplify here, so far, this is what I have. I have 16. Uh, I'm going to factor this apart, x plus 2 squared. Um, minus 1, this is y plus 1 squared. And on the other side, we have a negative 4. Okay. So, what do we need to do with this? We have to divide by the negative 4. When you divide by negative 4, this is where it gets a little ugly. Dividing this negative 4 over, this thing will become positive, so that tends to be on the hyperbola is your major axis, since this is going to be turned positive. This one, so it's going to be a vertical aspect, or a vertical hyperbola, because this will turn positive, because of negative 4. This thing will be negative, and the worst part is there will be a fraction on the bottom, because the 4 will go down here, and this won't simplify cleanly, because the top number is bigger, so you have to divide by the 16 top and bottom. Um, so that's going to be really ugly. So here's what we get. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this all in one foul swoop. y plus 1 squared, there's going to be a 4 on the bottom, and it turned positive, so I moved it out front. Um, this thing's going to turn negative, x plus 2 squared, and since the 4 went to the bottom over here, and we divide both by 16, here's what I get. Which is really ugly, because I had to divide both top and bottom by whatever the top number was, not whatever the bottom number was. So dividing by 16, so the top number turned out to be a 1, the bottom number is a, a 4. That's 4 divided by 16. And it was negative. Okay, any questions with that? Sorry, I did that really quick. Center, where is it at? Say it again. Negative one, negative two. Negative two, negative one. Negative two, negative one. That's my center because you got to use x on the first step. Yeah, mistake. You probably knew what you're doing. You probably forgot, right? Negative two, negative one. There's my center. We are going up and down from that center. Um, so the the up and down motion is whatever the square root of the major axis is. This is my major axis. How I know that? It's not because it's the bigger of the two numbers. That's not how hyperbolas work. It's whatever term is positive, that's your major axis. So the square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going up 2 and down 2 from the center. That's where my branches are going to start. Um, I'm not going to draw the branches yet, but that's the vertices. That's your major axis. Dot. They call it the transverse axis. Okay, again, that's using the, the 4. We, we don't use the 1 fourth. We don't have to go right and left from there. That's not something that we look at. Um, for the you know, minor axis, we don't have that. Um, but the only thing I do need to do, I need to figure out the foci still, and I also need to draw the asymptotes in there so I can figure out how to draw the branches. Because the branches are supposed to be going off the dots I just drew, but I can't draw them yet. I need to be more accurate. All right, but let's do the foci. Foci formula, b squared equals c squared minus a squared. That's your new formula. Again, that will be on the board on test day on Friday. This is how you find the foci for a hyperbola. Uh, my a squared number is a 4. 
And again, it's not because it's the bigger of the two numbers, it's because it's the positive term. And the one fourth is over here. And notice, I don't put the negative sign on it. Um, you, you actually just ignore the negative sign. The V squared is just the number on the bottom. You don't worry about the negative sign on it. Uh, that gets people sometimes. You add the four across, you get four and one fourth. Uh, this turns out to be 17 over 4 if I make that an improper fraction. And that way when I take the square root, I actually know that it's going to be the square, the square root of 17 over 2. Because I take the square root of top and bottom. The square root of 17 is like 4.1. So 4.1 divided by 2 is 2 point something. So, it's, so my foci is going to be here and here. It's so close to the, the actual, like, it's so close to the vertices that it's really hard to see those. It's just past the vertices. But again, you might need a calculator. Just type in, you know, whatever, you know, 4.25 and take the square root of it. Because that's, you know, 4 and a quarter. So you're going to take the square root of that. You can just do decimals. It's fine. I just do the fraction because I can do that in my head. All right. Questions at all about how to find the foci? Now, the asymptotes. The asymptotes, um, this is the formula we talked about in class one day. It's rise over run. It's the square root of the number underneath the y on the top, so this square root is 2. The square root of that is the x number, that's my run. The square root of that is a half. And that's my slope. So it's going up 2 over half, up 2 over half. Maybe that's what you want to think of. Um, I, you can flip that instead of thinking it's up 2 over half. You could, you could do the reciprocal, and this is the same thing. It's 4 over 1 because you can multiply the two to the top, because you do a reciprocal. So it's up rise four, run one, maybe that's a better way to think of it. But um, up, up two over half, or up four, one, two, three, four, over one. Two, three, four, over one. So here's one of my, there's one of my asymptotes. And the other asymptote is here and here. And now I have that, now I can draw the branches. The branches hug right up against these asymptotes. And again, the asymptotes go right off the center. So if you're asking, like, why do they go that way, they hug right up against the center line. The center dot, I should say. Okay, questions at all about the hyperbola? Okay. Number four, you should be able to do on your own. It's already completed the square. You should be able to just look at it, do the center. Um, there is a one on the bottom, one of those, I think. I don't know if that's been actually done here. Anyone still did that, though? Okay. I remember doing that problem. So it must have been just an example we did in class. Yeah, we did it in class because that was the one where you were over too far on the spot. Yeah. I went over like two instead of one. Yeah, I remember that now. That's why I remember. All right, anyway, uh, four, uh, oh, they actually have numbers on the bottom, there's not ones. So this one, the major axis, this is horizontal. So the uh, hyperbola is going side to side. The reason why is because there's 25 and the x squared is the positive term. So it is going right and left. Um, center is going to be, what, negative three, zero. That's your center. Then you could draw, you know, the foci from there and the asymptotes. So this one actually works out a lot better. It's plenty of numbers. Not so weird stuff. But again, expect one that you have to complete the square, one that you just kind of draw. But it's a hyperbola. You have to use all this stuff. The generic formulas will be on the board test day. But basically, you just need to know how to do it. Because like just seeing this on the board, like just seeing that, like that doesn't tell you much unless you know what A is and what B is. So you're going to really have to need to know stuff. <coughs> All right, are we good so far? Okay, that's it for today on those. Your semester practice test. This. Okay, your semester, your semester practice guide. Yesterday we finished with this problem. So if you were not here yesterday, we did one through three. Today, <coughs> my goal is to finish up the next two. Okay, so we're going to do number four. We'll talk about how to find the volume. We've done these problems a long time ago when we were doing factoring and multiplying and stuff. And then we'll talk about how to factor. Question. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, all right. Are we good to go? Everyone knows. I'm going to go through these pretty quick. Hopefully you've got your practice semester test out. If you don't have it, like you've misplaced it, you're just like, I can't find it right now, just have a piece of paper out so you can, so you can, um, so you can write it down. And we'll start here in a second. Time to get those out. Okay. Let's go through and let's finish this up. Got a few minutes left here. We should have plenty of time to finish these. Okay, on this one, um, what we have to do is we have to find the volume. The volume of this one is found by doing this, and this is the part you're going to have to kind of work out. Um, we're going to have to multiply these three things together to figure out volume. It's length, width, and depth in no particular order. These are these three things multiply together, and I'll have to foil it all out. You know, first out and last for the first two, whatever the answer is, foil it to the back. Once you have this, this is the volume of the whole thing. Then I'm going to have to subtract out the Jenga piece that's missing. The piece that's missing here is this. Length, width, and depth. That's the Jenga piece that's missing. That's the dimensions. Length, width, and the depth going back is x plus 5. Once I have that, then I can subtract these two things from each other. Subtract this and subtract that. Whatever those answers are. So you'll subtract the parts off. And that'll be your final answer. Your answer will be a polynomial. It'll be, you know, you're not getting down to where x is 2. You know, you're not solving for anything. It'll be some polynomial, big, this will be big, and then you're going to subtract some other little tiny polynomial. You'll combine like terms, and that'll be your final answer. Does that make sense, what you're going to do on that problem? If it's area problem, same exact idea. Length and width, you subtract the little piece in the middle that's out of it. And you do the same thing, your answers will be polynomials. I'm not trying to solve for x or anything like that. You just I'm testing whether you know how to FOIL, you know how to add and subtract like terms. I thought this is the best problem to do. So it covers all my bases. So I don't have to give you multiple questions on. Alright, questions on how to do number four. Okay, you'll have to kind of finish foiling it out by yourself. Uh, let's talk about number five. And again, you know, either tomorrow or the next couple days, I can always check to see how you did it. So if you want to know if you did it right or not. Probably have an answer key you guys can look at at some point and see if you're right. Okay, this, this is my last one, number five. We have to factor this thing completely. So to factor this thing apart, um, we're going to pull out common factors first. I always look for common factors, then I do trinomial, difference of squares, cube rule, grouping method. There's no grouping, it's, I don't have four terms. What does everything have in common? x squared, and I think they all have sixes. So if I divide the six out, um, I'm gonna be left with an x squared in the front, a three x in the middle, and a two in the back. That's taking out the six x squared. Now, the, this thing can actually factor further, because what rule is this now? Trinomial, it's two parentheses, it's gonna be minus minus, x and x, what, two and one? Now, how I know that? They're the same operations, they're both minus signs. We break up the x, we break up the 2 in the back, and it does make 3 in the middle, and that 6x squared out front, there's your final answer. I want you to go as far as you can if you're factoring. Be sure that you go as far as you can. Don't just stop at some middle spot. You have to factor out until you have a bunch of parentheses out. Be careful, because like cube rule, difference of squares, grouping method, they're all free game. It'll be a problem where you can factor it up into parts, like smaller and smaller pieces. So that's something like that you need, you know you need more help on. That's a great question, maybe today, tomorrow, um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week, that you want to ask questions like, hey, I need to know how to factor, or I don't know how to do number four, or I foiled things together. 
or I'm not really good at graphing. So we can go talk about graphing problems. All right, we good. All right, tomorrow, we're gonna do the second half of your chapter nine practice guide. We're also gonna do the next two problems on your, on your um, review sheet here. Um, so that's kind of what we have set for tomorrow. We have a little more time tomorrow. We have an extra 10 minutes or so tomorrow than what we have today. Um, so we'll, we'll have plenty of time to go through this and solve. But I want to make sure that everyone's kind of good to go here. Uh, test for chapter nine is remember it's on Friday this week, so that's in a couple days. You have homework due tomorrow. That's your 898 stuff. That's your only book assignment you have this week. Okay. All right. Good. Semester test next Thursday. Semester test next Thursday.